We are back to talk about home safety for seniors. In this part, we're going to talk about assistive devices and, as it says, the benefits versus the costs. And I bring this up because a lot of people or a lot of elderly parents will object to spending $100 or $200 on a piece of safety equipment for the home, not realizing that if they had to move out of their home, they would be spending that on a daily basis. The idea of this module is to help you and elderly parents understand that assistive devices can help them stay at home and in the long run, it can minimize care costs. I'm Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert, advocate, and speaker. I am your host. I am your educator for this program. Let's go on to our normal housekeeping. As you know, I use the word elderly parent or elderly parents for the person for whom you provide care. That could be anyone, including a client. The outline for this module and the slides are in the course materials. Please print them out, take notes, follow along right on the slides. Let's talk about the objectives for benefits versus costs of assisted devices. At the end of this part, you should be able to identify safety products for elderly parents. I'm going to show you pictures of very common safety devices. Present ideas to your elderly parents about why you should use these, the benefits versus the cost, and gain agreement from your parents to install and place these items in the home. Let's start with the why. The primary goal of using safety products is to enhance the safety of a loved one with the goal of helping that elderly parent stay at home. Most parents wanna stay at home. Very few want to leave to move to a care community unless it's absolutely mandatory. Many of the products I will show you can prevent a premature move to a care community or a nursing home and the need for paid in-home caregivers. So the idea is that these products can delay advanced care and more care costs. Accidents like falls that can result in a move from the home can be monitored, possibly avoided. Assistive devices can delay and minimize more expensive costs of care. I've seen it. I have done this with many of my clients over the years. As we know, accidents and injuries, they most commonly happen in the home. When you start to investigate safety devices, you'll find that there are more out there than you can imagine, actually thousands, things that you didn't even know that you needed until you saw the device and thought, wow, that would be a really good device for my elderly parents. There are so many solutions for safety concerns out there. I want to share the story of my father and an interesting safety device that we found for him. My dad had a bad back because he had experienced a fall off of a railroad car. So back in those years, he worked on the railroad. He was standing up on top of a car. Engineer didn't realize he was up there, moved the train. He fell you know, 20 feet to the ground. Pretty bad back injury with disc problems that he lived with throughout life. But when he got into his 80s, he was still driving a car. And if any of you have disc problems, you will empathize with this. You know that when you sit on that car seat and you try to turn your body this way to the front of the car, it like it catches and it's like, oh my gosh, that hurts. So there are discs and i don't know if how many of you remember those twister discs back from probably maybe the 70s but it was a square piece of almost plywood that sat on a disc that turned like this and so the idea was that you would do this with your body to slim your waist so they actually have those for car seats we got one for my dad and it made it easier for him to turn his body from this way to this way in the car because he wasn't having to put so much pressure on his body to do that movement. The disc actually just turned like this. So the point of this story is there are things out there that you don't even know exist that can solve so many problems for your elderly parents. I think you'll be excited when we go through these. Some of these are very practical, but there are 
devices that are being investigated today that will be available tomorrow. There are devices today that you won't find in six months because there's something better out there. So let's start to take a look at some of these. So the benefits versus the cost, and this is the important conversation to have with your parents because you see that pile of money over there on the slide. You might be in sticker shock about some of the prices of these items to help a loved one stay at home. But when you compare the cost of safety products to the cost of in-home caregivers or a care community or a nursing home, you'll see the value in one day of paying for other care. That value exists in helping your parents stay at home and reduce their costs. So as a point of comparison, if you look on the numbers of these slides, some people, believe it or not, have the money to pay for live-in caregivers in their home. If you hire a traditional care agency, the rate these days is anywhere from $25 to $35 per hour. If you take that times 24 hours, you're at about $650 for one day of having a caregiver live in your parents' home and care for them. Most of these safety devices that you see don't cost $650. If you combine them and buy a number of them, it may. The next rate is $160 per day for a care community. And this is assisted living and some memory care communities. That is the average rate per day today. All of these rates go up on average about 6% every year. If you had to private pay for care in a nursing home, that rate is three to $500 a day. I'm showing you this so that you can see the sticker shock right away that most people don't realize until they start to look into all of this. And then so many people are shocked. We'll start by reviewing the most commonly used safety devices for the home. And I want to make it clear, I don't personally receive any fees from talking about these items. These are products that I have used for my own clients. And the pictures and the brands are on these slides to give you examples. I'm not telling you to go out and buy any of these. You have to do your own investigation. Some of these products are in the startup phase. So a lot of these companies will operate as a startup in the hope that a larger company will buy them. New technology is being continually tested. Some of these items in these slides will be obsolete in a very short period of time with something newer replacing them. So what this means is that if you find yourself looking for one of these examples on the internet, the brand name may have changed, the item may no longer be available because the company was sold, the product may have been discontinued and replaced by a newer model, but these will at least give you an idea of what's out there. And I will probably update this presentation in particular more frequently just because these products do change. So many of you have probably seen this one on television. I call it the I've fallen and I can't get up emergency call system. Lifeline is probably one of the better known brands. They've been around for a long time. Emergency call buttons are mandatory in nursing homes and most assisted living communities. They have internal systems that work, but you can also use these in the home. Emergency call systems come in the form of a wristband that looks like a watch or a necklace that can be worn. And both of these have a button in the middle that can be pushed. So if you look at this, slide in front of the device you see a round or an oval shaped i would call it button with a cord that is the necklace that somebody would wear around their neck they're very useful for people who live at home alone or if somebody lives at home let's say you live with your elderly parent and you go to work all day and they're home most of the day it's good for that most of these are waterproof. They can go in the shower and the tub. They're pretty indestructible. You can drop them. They won't, they won't break. The challenge here is that your elderly parents actually have to agree to wear them. Believe it or not, that does become a sticking point. If they don't wear the device all the time and they have a fall, they're not going to be able to get to it. 
Now, my elderly father, here's another story about dad. My dad didn't really want one of these devices, so we were like, okay, fine. Well, one day my dad falls and he fell fortunately in his home. The bathroom and the bedroom were relatively close. So it was like this bedroom was over here, bathroom was here. And fortunately, the landline back in those days was right here. He fell walking between the bathroom and the bedroom and he was able to crawl on the floor to get close enough to the landline to pull the cord down, knock the phone down, and he was able to call my sister who came over and helped him. But had that not happened, he probably would have laid there for days. And I'll talk more about that because I have had that happen to clients where they didn't want one of these systems and they fell and family members didn't find them for days or family members actually found them dead when they got there because they laid there for days, couldn't get to any food, water, became dehydrated and passed away. So these really are a good advice um, device to use. The prices are in a range and some companies don't require a contract. Other companies will require a 12 to 24 to 36 month contract that can be ended if your parent moves into an assisted living communities. So you really do want to look into these. The prices vary anywhere from $19.95 a month all the way up to $39 or $49.95 a month. It depends on the complexity of the system. So it's something to look into. The next product, and this is a newer product, a newer idea, but it's GPS technology. And these come in a variety of forms. I have shown a picture of what's called a smart soul here. And it's, it's exactly what it sounds like. It is a soul, much like an orthopedic soul that fits into the shoe of an elderly parent or child who might be a wander risk. The idea is that the product helps you locate your loved ones who might wander or become lost or you're wondering where they are. These are very good for people who have Alzheimer's, dementia, people who've had traumatic brain injuries, any type of developmental disability and autism who may be at risk of becoming lost. This particular product, the Smart Soul, uses GPS and cellular technology and it sends updates every five to 10 minutes to the monitoring system. And you as a family member can put an app on your cell phone and you can receive an email or you can receive a text with the location of your loved ones. There are also other alternative products that are like a watch or they look like a keychain, and you can put them in a pocket and take it with you. The smart sole is easy because if people normally wear the same shoes, you don't have to think about taking it out of one shoe and putting it into another shoe. The other items that can be carried like keychains and things like that, they're more easily lost. And if you forget to take them out of one pocket and another, you may be looking all around. The retail prices for these do really vary anywhere from $100 a month to $300 a month, again, depending on the complexity. There are other companies out there that offer these devices. So this one is, believe it or not, called GTX Smart Soul. Other companies are Great Call, Pocket Finder, and Thoracare. If you Google GPS technology, you'll be able to find companies. And the idea is that you are locating your family member. So let me talk about that for a moment. When I was a care manager, we had a lot of clients who had early dementia who were still able to live in their homes. One of my first clients, her name was Flo, and our project for her was to take her golfing every Wednesday morning. She had played in a golfing league for most of her life. She was in her 80s. She still enjoyed playing golf. And every April, we and my caregivers would take her to play golf on Wednesday mornings. One, because she enjoyed golf. Two, she needed someone to drive the golf cart. She could no longer do that. And three, she could no longer record her scores. So she could hit the ball and talk to the ladies and have a great time, but she couldn't do those things. And her family wanted her to continue to play golf, but they were worried that 
she would become an irritation or a responsibility to other people on the golf course if they were having to log her score and carry her clubs and drive her cart and all of that. So we did that for a number of years. It was a joy. Flo also enjoyed walking very much. And early in her dementia, she would walk and she would not get lost. She would know exactly where she was. A few years into our care for Flo, I was driving down a very busy street near her house and I saw her walking. I noticed her walking and I pulled over into this parking lot and it was a hot day. It was probably 90 degrees. And I pulled up to her and I said, Flo, how are you? What are you doing? I bet you're really hot. I bet you'd like to go back home. And she said, oh, thank gosh, you drove up. Now, I'm sure she didn't know who I was at all. I could have been some stranger trying to pick up an elderly woman off the street, but fortunately I recognized her. I got her into my car. I took her back home, let her in because I knew how to do that. I knew where the keys were, got her water. And I talked to her family about the fact that I had found her. And based on that, what we ended up doing was adding a caregiver in the afternoon on days that she didn't have golf so that she could go for a walk and feel like she had been out and be a little physically exhausted and not risk wandering. Back then, they didn't have these devices. This would have been a perfect device to have for Flo so that her children didn't have to wonder, where is mom? They could look on a cell phone. They could look on their computer and find out. The other benefit of these GPS devices is that many times when this happens when an elderly parent starts to wonder or a spouse starts to wonder. The fear is that they'll become lost. And if you've seen the news, there are plenty of stories of people wandering out the front door of an assisted living community in the heat or in the cold of the winter. And they they die because of heat stroke or because of frostbite or things like that. So the idea of these products is that if you have one and you can monitor your parent, you may not have to move them into what's called a locked or a gated care community. There are care communities that exist out there that are, they're fewer than the normal assisted living communities because normal assisted living, you can come and go as you please. These are actually locked and many times you have to have a doctor's order to place someone in one of these communities because it is kind of restricting someone's rights, being that they can't get out. But the benefit of them not getting out is not getting lost, not being harmed in the heat, not being harmed in the cold. The idea of these GPS devices is that it can prevent that type of placement as long as possible. So really something to consider. If you have a loved one who is at risk for wandering away or getting lost, these are great solutions. Let's talk about medication reminders, which are very popular for elderly parents. This one is a medication reminder that I actually did use for my clients, and I liked it for a number of reasons. If you see the four rows on the medication box, this is a good product for people who either have to take medications multiple times a day or you're trying to place a month's worth of doses in a container. So the top row could be morning, the mid row could be noon, the third row could be dinner time, and the fourth row could be bedtime. Or if they only take medications once a day, you use one strip for each of those. The goal of these is to help your elderly parents take the medications as scheduled and to prevent them from having to open up a bunch of bottles and and take them out. Some of these monitoring boxes, and I'll show you these, have alarms that you can set at various times of the day. Some boxes will automatically move the medication to the next slot at a specified time of day. It depends on how much help your elderly parents need. This one really is, I call it a no frills box. And it can be set up again in advance for a week in advance. If they take doses four times a day, you can set it up for a week. It's called a med center and it's called a 31 day monthly pill organizer. This one is about, I wanna say 39.95 and you can find it at a website called medcentersystems.com. 
This one is a little more elaborate. This one is from Philips. That again is this, the company who also has the I've fallen and I can't get up button. This is the companion. It's a tower where medications can be loaded and a timer goes off like a beep to advise your parents that it's time to take the medication. This one is also on a subscription service like that. I've fallen and I can't get up button. So this is gonna be an additional charge and it could be anywhere from $29.95 to $59.95 a month with an initial fee for actually leasing or purchasing this box that you see. This is an e-pill reminder. I have actually used this one too. This one has a pretty annoying reminder. It beeps and there's also a red blinking light that if you look at the lid of this, you can see it at the top. You put the pills into those slots and it actually can be locked to prevent your elderly parent from getting in there and tampering with the medications. The previous one can also be locked. The way that this works is the individual picks up that box and there's a slot in the lid so they turn it over so that the medications dispense into their hand and they place it back down and that's what sets the timer and also lets the machine know that the medication was taken. The retail price for these is around I want to say between two and three hundred dollars but again if you look at the cost of one day in a nursing home or two days in an assisted living community that pays for it. This one doesn't have a subscription service. It's it's one that you buy and you have to use. The website for this one is the name of the product. It's epill.com and it's forward slash dispenser. This one is an even more advanced medication system called the Hero System. I'm showing you the different systems because I want you to know that there are multiple systems out there. Not all come with a required subscription. Some you can buy outright. Some have advanced options. And this is one of those. So this system allows a fill of a 30 day supply. There is a daily alarm reminder in addition to a mobile app. So you can connect the machine to an app on your cell phone to confirm if your family member took the medication or if they are late or if they missed a dose. The other benefit that this machine has is that if your insurance plan allows they have a pharmacy that will refill the medications automatically and deliver them to the home. So you as the caregiver or your elderly parents don't have to run to the pharmacy to pick up medications. They can be delivered. The downside of that is if you have a medication that changes in the middle of the month, you have to go to the pharmacy yourself and pick that out. But if medications are stable, this is another option. The retail price for this one is around $400 a month. I don't know what the subscription rate is, but if you go to their website, it's herohealth.com. You can find out more information. There are many prompt and reminder devices out there. If you Google those words, you will actually find them. This one that I'm showing is a voice activated clock. It's called Reminder Rosie. I believe the website is ReminderRosie.com. This one is interesting because you can use it for medication reminders. You can use it to remind of doctor appointments, birthdays, other important information. The very neat thing about this is you record the reminders in your own voice. So your mom or dad will hear your voice reminding them of something. It would be a reminder like, Hi mom, it's 10 o'clock today. It's time to go take your medications. Or, hi mom, it's Tuesday. I'm picking you up at three o'clock. We have a doctor appointment. The retail price for this product is anywhere between $79 and $89.99 at the present day. You should also look for other types of products. There are necklaces, there are watches, there are so many other voice activated clocks and mechanisms out there that help with all of these reminders, day, date, time, medication reminders, appointment reminders. These are really cool devices. This next one is a floor to ceiling pole and you can place it in any location in the home but you need it to be in a location where the ceiling is low enough for the device to be installed. So a standard 
eight foot, 10 foot, 12 foot ceiling will work. The idea is that this floor to ceiling pole can be used as a support for standing, transferring and sitting. If you look at the lady in the photo, she's holding onto it to actually pull herself up. Now the caveat is you have to have the arm strength to be able to do that. For my clients, we would place these poles next to a toilet in the bathroom, next to the shower or the bathtub, next to the bed like you see here, or next to a chair where a person commonly sits. The retail cost for these anywhere between $75 and $150. That doesn't include installation. You do have to install these by yourself. Gate belts. If any of your elderly parents have been in a nursing home and had a fall, they may have what's called a gate belt. It's a safety device. You wear it around the waist and it looks like a belt, but it's probably two or three inches wide and it's usually made of woven material. Gate belts are used to help a loved one sit, stand, and walk. It helps with balance. If you look at the lady in the photo, the woman is wearing a gate belt and her hand is behind the person so that a gentle tug forward, backward, right or left can help with balance. The most important thing is do not use a gate belt unless you have been properly trained by a physical therapist, occupational therapist or another healthcare provider. You can unintentionally injure a loved one. You can break some ribs. You can really hurt them if you don't use these devices right, but they are very helpful for people who know how to use them. Let's talk about some other common safety devices. There are a large variety of home safety and support products for the elderly. A lot of these, you can find them on the internet. They include baby monitors, motion devices that can turn lights off and on, stove burner alerts, blood pressure monitors, pulse oximeters, thermometers. This slide is a picture of a baby monitor. Baby monitors are a great alternative to allow your aging parents to ask for help if you are in another part of the home or a caregiver is in another part of the home or if they're in the bedroom during the night and they need to get up to use the restroom but they don't want to do it by themselves because they're afraid of a fall. Today, these monitors are amazing. They have audio and video feeds. So not only can you hear your loved one, you can also check on them. A lot of baby monitor systems, when you buy them, they have two receivers and you can also connect them to the internet. So another great idea. This one takes us into the idea of video camera systems. This is one that you really do want to talk to your parents about because it can feel a little bit like Big Brother is watching and it can also invade privacy. But the benefits are, are the benefits are really great. So there is a camera system out there called Arlo. It's A-R-L-O. And we use this for many of my clients. So they have indoor and outdoor camera systems. You can place the little cameras throughout the house. You can place them in the entrance of a home, in a living room, in a bedroom, in a hallway to a bathroom, in a kitchen, and in a living room. The goal is that you are able to look on your cell phone, check all the cameras, figure out what your parents doing, see where they are, make sure that they're safe, avoid falls. There's another product out there and I put this one on here. It's called Zeppi. Now this one is in development. It's being tested right now. This, believe it or not, is a helium balloon product that you put in the home of your parents. And it is so sophisticated that if your parent would call Zeppi and your parent was in the bedroom, that helium balloon would lift off of its apparatus and fly into the bedroom of your elderly parent. It also has a big monitor on here. So if you see the girl on the monitor, the idea is that you could call your parents and Zeppi would float over to mom or dad sitting at the kitchen table. You could be on the video monitor having a cup of coffee and talking to your elderly parent. So this Zeppi has a couple of benefits. One, it's a monitoring device, so it can check on your parents. So if you call and your parents give approval to Zeppi, Zeppi could fly into the bedroom and go find them. And the aspect of socialization. So for example, during the coronavirus, people could not go see their elderly parents. Zeppi would have been an awesome device to have at that time 
you could put yourself on the phone and be talking to your elderly parent and it's it's big enough so it's about two feet tall it's big enough that you actually might look like you were sitting in their kitchen having a con having a conversation with them so it's it's pretty amazing what they are coming out with to support video cameras in the home and technology. The big thing is for most of these, you do need to have good internet at your parents' home for you to be able to check in remotely on them. So internet speed is definitely an issue with these. Let's talk about landing strips and floor mats. If you look at the photo, you see this floor mat that looks like a entryway doormat into a home. Many of these are placed on the floor next to a bed or in front of a chair. And the idea is that if your parent is a fall risk or they're physically weak, you want to be able to get to them as quickly as possible or have an in-home caregiver get to them as quickly as possible if they get up to move and you're afraid that they're going to fall. Some people, some parents will not call for assistance. So these landing items are items that you can put on the floor. When they put their weight on that landing strip, an alarm will sound and you can set the loudness of the alarm. It'll beep so that you in the house somewhere else can hear it. You can get to the parent's bedroom, help them with their mobility, avoid a fall. Similar to this are chair and bed alarms. Chair and bed alarms are very similar, but these are the opposite. So these go off when weight is lifted. So the landing strip, you step on it, the alarm goes off. These, you get up from the bed or get up from a chair or try to do that, the alarm goes off. It's the same idea of notifying a caregiver that it's time to check on your loved one because they are getting up and walking and they may need assistance to be safe, which leads us to walkers. You'll see two different types of walkers on this slide. The one at the bottom is a traditional aluminum lightweight walker. This is the walker that most Medicare and insurance companies will reimburse for. The one at the top left is called a rollator. This one you have to privately pay for, and these are in quite a price range. The rollators are anywhere from $79 to you can spend $400 if you want to for them. But the idea again is that it helps support stability for an elderly parent. Insurance may cover the cost of the lightweight aluminum walker. You have to check with your insurance. Receiving approval can take some time. And I will tell you that there are limitations to the type of device that insurance reimburses for, whether it is a walker or a wheelchair. And there are time frames. So if you get a walker, you may not be able to get another walker for a period of time three to five years that Medicare will reimburse for. So most of these products are products that families pay for. The Rollator is good because as you can see, it's much sturdier. It also has hand brakes. So if a person is walking on an uneven surface or if your elderly parent feels like the walker is rolling too fast, they can pull the brakes and it will slow the walker down. Also, there is a seat on there. So if you're, you're out with your parent and they get tired and they're looking for a chair, they can sit down on that walker seat. The other neat thing is that walker seat lifts up and there is a bag underneath where they can put a purse, you can store water bottles, snacks, all kinds of things. So it's kind of like a, a little piece of luggage that you walk with. They all, all of these can be folded up. All of these can be placed in a car. Next, we have um, canes and wheelchairs. And this one, I'm showing what is called the lightweight wheelchair. There are a variety of wheelchairs that come from these lightweight transfer chairs to heavier wheelchairs. There are also specially designed wheelchairs for people with disabilities. Plus, there are electric wheelchairs and scooters. You may have seen some elderly parents driving around their neighborhood on these scooters. The traditional heavy standard wheelchair, they're heavy. They can be from 30 to 50 pounds. And that makes it difficult for the average person, even myself, to lift those in and out of a trunk. These transport chairs that I have pictured here, they're lighter weight and they're narrower. So they will fit through a doorway that is less than the new standard of a door for people with disabilities. So 
So most doors now are 36 inches wide. If you go into an older house, some of those doors may be 30 inches wide, 28 inches wide. This little transfer chair will fit through there. And the beauty of it is that it only weighs between 10 and 15 pounds. So almost any person could pick this up and put it into a car. Now the danger is you don't want to use these out on the streets for any major purpose. The idea would be lightweight transport. You drive up to a doctor's office, you use it to get in and out. You're not going up and down curbs or anything like this. They're not steady enough for that. They're really great to use inside the house though. So there are Take this a step further, there are special wheelchairs for people with disabilities like multiple sclerosis. These are ordered through insurance companies with a lot of specifications, a lot of diagnosis codes. And then we have the electric wheelchairs. Those also can be reimbursed by insurance, but you have to have a reason, a disability, a reason that a person cannot use a wheelchair like this transfer chair or another wheelchair. Honestly, there are devices out there for almost everything that you can imagine. You can find a lot of these if you want to go see them in medical equipment stores. Most of these are in, I would say, larger cities. There's also online catalogs that you can look at, and I'll give you some of the names of the online website. So if you have a pen, you might want to take it out. Names that you might recognize are Vitality Medical, Medical Supply Depot, Henry Shine, and Shine is spelled S-C-H-E-I-N. Betty Mills is another site. Obviously Walgreens, some of the major pharmacy type stores. Vive Health, V-I-V-E Health, and there are others. You could spend hours looking on the internet for all of these products. Next, let's go to lifts. So this is the next level of assistance that an elderly parent might need. And what this means is that your elderly parent cannot stand for a period of time. They can't bear weight on their feet for some reason, and they're physically weak. So you need a piece of equipment to transfer them. For loved ones who want to remain at home that do have these type of mobility difficulties, a pivot lift, this is a pivot lift, or a Hoyer lift that we will look at next can be used. A pivot lift is for a person who still physically has some arm and leg strength, and they can stand and bear weight. So if you look at the picture, the circle at the bottom is where a person would place their feet. The two squares in the middle are to rest the thighs upon, and the top bar is where they would grab on. So the idea is that you would take this pivot lift and put it in front of a chair. You would help the person stand, they would take a step onto this lift and you turn it. So the idea is not to be driving around on one of these things. It's not like those scooter things that you see in the mall, but it's just to pivot and sit. So for example, if you were taking a parent to the bathroom and you had them in a wheelchair, you could pull the wheelchair up close to the toilet, have them stand up on this lift, turn the lift to a 45 degree turn or a 60 degree turn, and then they would sit back down on the toilet. The range cost for these is anywhere between $800 and $1,200. Sometimes you can find used pivot lifts and used Hoyer lifts um, on the internet or at some equipment stores definitely need training to use these. You do not want to use these if you have not been trained. You could cause more harm to yourself and more harm to an elderly parent by having both of you tip over. A Hoyer lift is the most advanced type of lift for an elderly parent. And I want to say that there are electrical Hoyer lifts and there are mechanical lifts. If you're going to buy one of these, I recommend an electrical one. They are more expensive, a couple thousand dollars. But if you don't, the mechanical lift requires that you actually crank a lift to lift the weight of your elderly parent. Most people can't do that. These lifts are good for people who really cannot bear weight, cannot stand, cannot transfer. So someone who is bed bound, chair bound, they cannot physically get up without any help, definitely need training to use this type of lift. 
One of the caveats, and I say this when you order these, your insurance may or may not approve it, first of all. So you may have an out-of-pocket expense anywhere between $1,700 to, you can go elaborate all the way up to six. I've usually found them for around $2,500 for my clients. But as you can see, there are feet on this lift. You have to make sure that that feet width, the, the width from the left foot to the right foot, it can vary. But you have to make sure that it corresponds with the items where you're transferring the person from. So those legs must fit within the leg space of a wheelchair. They must fit within the space underneath a bed. So if you have a bed that is sitting on a, a particle board or something, that's not going to work. You've got to have a bed that those legs can go underneath. When you talk to the people at these equipment companies, Make sure that you ask them to tell you everything that goes wrong with these. And I say everything that goes wrong because people don't think of the fact that those legs have to go underneath furniture. If they can't, it's not going to work for you. As with other assistive devices, these may look complicated. They're not that complicated with training. And they really can help loved ones stay at home. And these Hoyer lifts, again, a lot of times you can find a used Hoyer lift on the internet, but you do have to be careful to have somebody check it out to make sure that it does work appropriately. You wouldn't want to buy a lift that was used that has some type of mechanical defect and it actually drops your parent on the floor. So that would be the danger of buying a used lift. So let's just summarize these ideas. So there are so many devices available, so many devices being developed every day when you go on the internet, you want to search the words assistive devices, medical equipment for the elderly. You'll find so many products that you will honestly be amazed <laughs> at what you find out there. And these products really, the benefits to your elderly parents are that they do get to stay at home, that the daily care that you are providing can somehow be monitored through use of a medication machine, a reminder clock, video cameras if your parents will allow it transfer devices. While all of these can seem expensive up front, even let's take the worst case scenario, a Hoyer lift that costs $3,000, okay? If you look at the cost of an in-home caregiver for 30 days, $100 a day, $3,000. If you look at the cost of $160 in a care community every day times 30 days, you're at five or $6,000. So when you look at this, the idea is how long do we think we can keep mom and dad at home? Is it a year or two years or three years? And will this expense over here help us do that and prevent more expensive care costs? That's the benefit of all of these, in addition to the fact that your parents get to stay in their home. I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Thank you for being with me for this webinar. We will move on to the next webinar. I appreciate you being here. I'll see you soon.